in lesson thirteen we will be reviewing substitution as a method for solving a system of equations and we will also review how we find the area of an isosceles triangle so first reviewing substitution first thing we want to do is to isolate one variable so we want to get either x equals or y equals, and this one is easy because we already on those x equals, so we pick that equation. Then in the other equation, when we had x equals, we find where we have x so that it matches, and we simply change that x to the y plus 7, so 2 times y plus 7 plus 3y equals 4. Then we need to distribute. So we have 2y plus 14, 2 times each of the things in the parentheses, plus 3y equals 4. Combine the like terms, and we have 5y. Subtract the 14 from both sides, and we have negative 10. And when we divide both sides by 5, we know that y is negative 2. This is a system of equations, so we need to find x and y and write them as an ordered pair. We know that y is negative 2, so so far we have that half of the ordered pair. As you remember, to get the x, we then take one of our equations and we put the number that we just found in, so we take our x equals y plus 7, we now know that y is negative 2, so that means we know that x is 5, and our solution is the ordered pair 5 comma negative 2. Your book does not write the answers in the back of the book as ordered pairs, but here at this school we require that you write them with the parentheses and the comma whenever you have solved a system of equations, not just a geometry problem that happens to have x and y in it. So to review your steps, to solve a system of equations by substitution, you isolate one variable in one equation, so either x equals or y equals, whichever one you think is easiest. Then you substitute that into the other equation and solve it, and then you know one of your variables. You substitute that back into whichever equation you think is easier, put that number in for the variable, and solve for the second variable. And as I just reminded you, we require that you write your answers in ordered pair form. So let's give that a try on another example. This one not quite as easy, but not very hard. We look at our system, neither one is x equals or y equals, so we pick the one we think is easiest. I am going to pick the first equation because it has a 1y, and everything else is a 2 or a 3 times the variable. This one happens to be a minus y, so I need to be careful with my minus sign. If I subtract the 3x from both sides, I have minus y is minus 3x plus 11. And then if I change all of the signs, I multiply everything by a negative 1. y equals 3x minus 11. That is what I will now substitute into the other equation. So in the other equation, since I have y by itself, I find the y in the other equation and I change the y to a 3x minus 11. That y was still times a 3, and I still have the 2x plus that out in front, and I still have the minus 11 on the right-hand side. Next step, distribute the 3, so that part is a 9x minus 33. We still have the 2x, we still have the negative 11. The 2x and the 9x combine to make 11x. 
If I have a minus 33, I need to add 33 to both sides. So 11x is 22. And when I divide by both, when I divide both sides by 11, I have 1x is 2. That means x is 2. So this time I have found the first letter of the ordered, ordered pair. And I still need to find the second one. So I can go back up to any one of my equations. I'm going to go to y equals 3x minus 11. I know that x is now a 2. So I plug that in. 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 11 gives me negative 5 for my y. So my ordered pair is 2, negative 5. Now, especially if it is a test, it's a good idea to plug your ordered pair back in and make sure that you got it right. This needs to now make both equations true. So if x is 2 and y is negative 5, I have 3 times 2 is 6. Minus minus 5 is a plus 5. That is indeed 11. If x is 2 and y is negative 5, I now have 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 times minus 5 is minus 15. That is indeed negative 11. That's how you know if you got it right. I'm not requiring you on homework to do a check on a test. If you have extra time at the end, I would encourage you to go back and plug in and make sure you have the correct answers. A little bit of vocabulary. Bisect simply means to cut something into two equal pieces. I can cut an angle into two smaller congruent angles. I can take a line segment all the way from A to C, and I can cut that in half so that the piece between A and B is the same length as the piece between B and C. And then we have bisected. So in the first picture, the ray XZ, my red line, bisects the big black angle. And we say that that red ray is an angle bisector. When we cut a line segment into two equal pieces, I say that that point in the middle bisects the whole long segment. Or I say B is the midpoint, the halfway point. Median is a segment that, con that connects a vertex to the midpoint. So B has to be the midpoint of that one side of the triangle. You see my tick marks that A to B and B to C are the same length. And then from that midpoint to the opposite angle, D on this triangle, that is a median. The median is not necessarily an angle bisector. So the median does not always bisect the opposite angle. And if you look in my picture, it looks like this angle on the left is smaller than the angle on the right, these are not congruent. They are not the same measure. Now, if it is an isosceles triangle, things are different. The median is now the height. It makes a right angle, and it does bisect angle B but that is only when I have an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle means you start off knowing that you have two congruent angles and or the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. So the side AB is just as long as the side BC. Angle A is just as big as angle C. The median is going to bisect this top angle so these two angles are also congruent. It's going to make a right angle down there. And A to the midpoint, um, which I'll just call M, 
is the same length as M to C. So there's a lot of special things in an isosceles triangle. And what we're now going to do is find the area of an isosceles triangle. So we see we've got two sides that are congruent. Those are both marked three. Area of any triangle, you know, is base times height divided by two. We're going to take this four as our base, the side that's different. Base and height must always be perpendicular. So we're going to draw this line that is perpendicular there so it makes a right angle. So now I have two right triangles inside of the triangle I'm really finding the area of. And this is the H that I need. To get that H, I'm going to look at one of those little triangles separately. If this was four, I know I've just split this into two pieces, two and two. Here's the H I want, and I have this right triangle. When you know two sides of a triangle, you simply use Pythagorean theorem to get the other one. So two squared plus H squared is three squared. The one by itself must always be the hypotenuse. So nine, is h squared plus 4. That means h squared is 5 when I subtract 4 from both sides. So that means that h is the positive square root of 5. So then I take that, plug that into my formula for the area, and I have the 4, that whole long base. Make sure when you do it here, you're taking the entire base all the way across here because I'm getting the area of the big triangle, so I need its base and its height. So 4 root 5 over 2, 4 over 2 can be simplified, and our area is 2 root 5. We check our units are meters, and area is always square meters.